In this episode, we're back to Cumberland County, heading to a small coastal town called Joggins. Now, the entire area of Joggins on the coast and heading inland all the way to Spring Hill was famous for its uh, Nova Scotian coal mining. Probably only second place to the coal mining activity that was found for a century or more up in Cape Breton. In fact, one could say that Joggins is at one end of the coal mining zone in Cumberland County, and Spring Hill is at the other end. Both Cape Breton and Spring Hill feature miners' museums with actual underground coal mine tours in original preserved coal mine slopes, albeit you don't go down too far. They are open to the public and are active during the tourist seasons. Examining some of the information surrounding the Joggins area and looking at some tourist photos along with some other information from Google on the internet, we did confirm that there are still some openings found on the beachside cliffs in Joggins today. The condition of these adits are of course to us unknown, we can only see what we saw in the photographs. So that's today's mission, to head to the Joggins area, make our way down onto the shoreline, and explore along and see if we can find these uh, at least two openings that we know of. Let's go! All right, we're just making our way down to uh, get to beach level from up at the top of the cliffs. So we're following a culvert from the road that flows down and gradually steps us down to beach level that you can see over there. Not many spots to get to the beach here in Joggins, but we'll take what we get. All right, now we're on beach level and the goal is to head along the cliff to just, uh, to just below the museum, the fossil museum, where the first adit is located, and then uh, later we'll try and find the other one. All right, up ahead of us there you can see the stairs that come down from the fossil museum. So somewhere here along the cliff there should be the opening of the, uh, the adit, the beachside adit that comes out of the cliff. So here we are at the, uh, the stairs that come down from the fossil museum onto the, uh, the beach level and we just discovered that where all this water flow is coming from is the, uh, the remains of one of the uh, beachside adits and it has collapsed. So you can see some of the old cribbing that's there but uh, there's no real getting in there today. That thing's a gusher. <laughs> all the water for approximately one, two kilometers of mine that's back in there this is where it terminates out onto the beach. So we'll have to uh, reposition ourselves and head down further. And uh, it's beyond that point, the, uh, the second location of a beachside at it. Let's go. Okay, we're heading down the beach in the other direction. We're gonna follow along till we get to the other one. The cliffs look pretty steep to go back to the vehicle, repark and come back down the cliff. So we're just gonna do a, a walk here along the, uh, the coastline till we come along to it. Probably a kilometer. During our walk here, we might as well stop for a second, show you what the fossil cliffs mean. Since we're here in Joggins, we might as well show you, for those of you around the world who haven't been here, this is what it looks like uh, when a rock crashes to the beach from the cliff up above and cracks open and you get all of these um, fossilized plant life and leaves and sticks and so on. Of course there's things way more exciting than that. They found dinosaurs and trees and everything else but uh, that's what it looks like. Okay we do see it up ahead there. The boys have reached it and uh, it's right there in the middle of the screen. Looks a little more decrepit than it does in some of the tourist pictures from recent years. We certainly can go back to way, the way it looked back in the past. We have an old uh, photo from Google that we found circa, I think, the 50s. Let's go have a look. There is a significant amount of water flow coming out of it. Let's have a look here. All right. 
right, we're going to open up the iris and head in here and see if we can get a, a shot. The cribbing and stuff is uh, <clears throat> really old and decrepit. And there's quite a bit of uh, collapse and fill that has come down in here. I mean, this cribbing is, uh, is decrepit. <laughs> wow. And a lot of this is filled in so much because the, uh, the crawl space here is probably only two and a half, three feet just beyond the uh, end of the camera there. It's just filled with silt. So this probably was a man height at it, but it's well over three quarters filled with silt and uh, fill and all of this water gushing out on top of it. And it looks plugged and collapsed, probably 75, 100 feet in there. Yeah, we're not going to get very far in this one. This silt is also very, very soft. It's almost like clay. You step on it and you mush down almost up to your knees. So this is a mess. Wow. This is probably the most haggard at it we've ever found. Well, let's head back out. All right, heading out. A total decrepit mess. Well, it was super funky, but unfortunately no mine track through that one. That one was uh, allegedly listed by statistics to go for a kilometer, but uh, not in very good condition. It wasn't really a hard rock mine. That's the thing with coal mines is they just, they just rot because they're so soft. So that's about all we can do here today. Anyway, time to hike all the way back and head back to the vehicles and that'll be the end of this episode. So thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one. Bye bye.